Hi everyone, my name is Amber Alf. I'm a BSN Accelerated student at Trinity College of Nursing. And this is my presentation um, on my selected theorist. I hope you enjoy it. To begin, Hildegard Peplow's nursing theory is interpersonal relations as a nursing process, man as an organism that exists in an unstable equilibrium made in 1952. To start off, I'm going to tell you a little about Hildegard Peplow's life. She was born on September 1, 1909 in Reading, Pennsylvania. Her parents were of German descent and she had a few siblings that she was very close with. What guided her interest to become a nurse was the common theme in women's career, which was following um, women's daily duties and nursing was one of that main idea of a woman's career. She um, got her education from Pennsylvania School of Nursing in 1931 for psychology and psychiatric nursing. She then went on to get her master's and doctor degree from Columbia University. She worked as a staff nurse, a school nurse, an army nurse, and an educator in Pennsylvania in New York City. And she died on March 17, 1999 at 90 years old. And here are some interesting facts that you guys can read about Pet Below yourselves. A little bit about Peplow's interpersonal relations and nursing theory. She focuses on decreasing stressors that may become incapacitating to improving client's condition using therapeutic interpersonal interaction. It includes interventions to, in order to avoid moving backward or remaining on a plateau, including mutual goal setting. She, it requires the nurse to have self-awareness and insight regarding their own behaviors and opinions. It includes the nurse-patient relationship being the most important thing in this whole theory. It identifies different roles nurse take on when working with patients. It also includes the middle range nursing theory. And lastly, and most importantly, of course, inter the importance of interpersonal care. So the question is, how can we use Hildegard Peplow's theory in our current and future nursing practice? So I wanna begin talking about the middle range theory because this is one of her main subjects in the theory. So orientation includes the problem defining phase of the nurse patient relationship, addressing the current situation and what the nurse can do to help and answering any questions that the patient may have. And I just want to include before I continue that this middle range theory is kind of the key to ensure progress throughout the nurse patient relationship. I'm also going to talk about a few other interventions, but this is her main point here. So to continue, identification means that the patient works independently with the nurse, establishes goals, and selects appropriate interventions in order to reach those goals. Next is exploitation. The patient makes full use of the nursing services and intervention. The nurse uses professional assistance. The nurse must communicate effectively, and the nurse aids in all interventions to reach goal and to continue to improve. And lastly, the Key importance of the resolution phase, which evaluates the goal, education on self-management, and of course the relationship ends. And Peplow's main point in this whole middle range theory mostly focuses on the resolution phase because she did not believe that without that resolution phase and without ensuring that the relationship ends, the patient-nurse relationship will not be effective. And I'm going to continue to talk about other main inventions to follow Peplow's theory in order to give the best care possible to our patients. So the first intervention here would be, would be mutual goal setting. These goals may address exploration of the problem at hand, identification of viable options, and implementing available resources. So I think it's very important here to remember um, when mutual goal setting with the patient, we want to make sure they are using the SMART acronym so they're specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. The importance of this intervention is that if the patient expresses their goals to the nurse, they will have a mutual goal understanding and therefore we can make implementations that can get them to their goal and improving their condition. 
The next intervention that would be suggested to follow Peplos theory would be to actively listen to what the patient is asking for help with, or this even relates back to my last intervention, which would be actively listening to their goals. We want to listen to their worries, their concerns, and explore their behavior and mode of communication, which is very important. By actively listening, we are showing the patient that we want to have a relationship with them in order to reach that goal and improve their situation. Next goal or intervention that we could do, we kind of already talked about, but um, it's very important to be aware of our own actions, behaviors, and opinions. We want to act professionally, respectfully, and without judgment when working with patients because we want to build that trust and respect. If the patient feels trusted and respected by us without judgment, then we are just keep getting towards that goal and we're keep improving that client situation. So we're kind of with all these interventions, we're just working and working and working towards that mutual goal. Next, we want to always educate the patient on everything that concerns and deals with their situation. We want to be patient-centered and ask the patient how they learn and how they listen best. So we want to ask them what their education approach works the best for them. Do they want to read pamphlets? instead of listening to us talk? Do they want us to summarize what's going on and leave out the details? We want to respect and address their worry and unease about everything. So as long as we're doing this intervention and educating them on everything in their health, they can continue to let us know their goals. And then we're still working towards improving that client's condition and re reaching that resolution phase. Next, we really want to build a deeper relationship with the patient. We want to investigate triggers and behaviors that could indicate their worry and concern. So if we start talking about an aggressive treatment and we can see that their body language is very nervous and worried and concerned, we might want to take a step back and just realize that this could be a trigger for them and putting it in the back of our mind that we may want to take a different approach next time to talking about this. Um, again, included in this intervention would be explaining the importance of goal setting. And we want to consider positive reinforcement for goal setting. By considering implementing positive reinforcement, we are just giving that reinforcement that they are going towards their goals and we are improving their condition working together. And last but not least, we want to ensure self-management during the resolution phase. So one of Peplow's main points of her whole theory of interpersonal relations, patient-nurse relationship, was the resolution phase. So we want to make sure that the client has the skills and knowledge for self-management after they leave our care. We want to go through all the education that we've been going through. We want to educate them on self-management at home. We want to remind them of their goals so that they don't end up back in our care. Even though we had a great relationship, we don't want them to come back into the hospital and need medical care. So that's the importance of that termination phase and the resolution phase. And I really like this picture on the bottom right because all of these interventions are kind of cyclic. So, you know, self-assessment, goal setting, self-monitoring, self-evaluation, and self-reinforcement is all in a circle to ensure improvement in the current condition. So in conclusion, I want to thank you guys for listening. Um, I really think that Hilligard Peplow's theory was super interesting to learn about because that interpersonal, re interpersonal relationship, patient-nurse relationship, is probably the most important thing that's going to be out through our whole career. Um, I only listed a few interventions of Peplow's theory that we could take into consideration as nurses, but there are so many more. So I have a few questions for you guys. Can you think of any other nursing interventions that may reduce stressors for the patient, therefore ensuring progress and preventing any declination? What are some similarities between Peplow and the theorists that you studied? What are the differences? And lastly, what aspects of this theory do you agree with? What aspects do you disagree with? So I want to thank you guys again for listening. 
here are my references and if you want to look more into Pavlov's theory, I think that it would be really beneficial for you in your nursing career. Thanks again for listening.